news and newspapers are a really big part of our lives, but you might not read a lot of these kind of things yet. So we'll go look through some of the features together today. Welcome back to another countdown game. You will need a notepad and a pen. Remember these eight boxes behind me are going to fill with vowels and consonants. You need to make the longest word you can in 30 seconds. You're playing against me. Let's fill the box. Here we go. 30 seconds starts now. check some answers. So after consulting the answers, the top word you could have got was analysed, which is an eight letter word. The word I got was learns, quite appropriate for what we're doing today. That's a six letter word. Well done if you managed to beat me. Today we are looking at identifying the features of a newspaper report. To start us off, have a look at this copy of the front cover of First News, which is a children's newspaper. What do you notice about a newspaper that is different from normal writing? There might be some things on this cover that you're able to spot which are different, and perhaps you know the name of them too. We're going to go through the different features that make up a newspaper. The first thing then is a headline. So a newspaper uses a headline to grab your attention. Headlines try to tell you the story in as few words as possible, and they're often alliterative. You can see this, look, watery weather washes out Wales. Or the other example, celebration for Captain Thomas More. It could be Colonel Thomas More, really. In a newspaper article, in the introduction, we often use the five W's. Take a moment now to think about what these five W's might be. Are you ready? Here they are. What, where, who, why and when. It's important to answer all of these questions in the introduction because it gives our reader the basis of the story. They can then decide if they want to read on further to find out more details. Let's have a look at an example of this together. So I'm going to show you an example from a newspaper report, an introduction. Here's the headline. Paper plane world record attempt folds badly. This is the introduction. I'll read it to you. On Monday, 25th of June, a British attempt to break the world paper plane flying record has literally hit a wall. The British team's best performer touched down just 6.8 seconds after its launch by students at Leeds University, more than 20 seconds short of the 27.6 second world record set in Atlanta in 1998. But it still beat the plane judged to have the best design during the competition in the university's Grand Hall. Now, as I read through that, you were probably thinking, oh, I've spotted some of the five W's. Take a moment now and see if you can spot all of the five W's. Remember, that's who, what, why, when and where. Maybe note these down or just think about them in your head and then come back. We'll share the five W's together. Are you ready? Here we go. What then? The British attempt to break the world paper plane flying record has failed. Where? The University Grand Hall at Leeds University. That's where it's taking place. When? Monday the 25th of June. Who? It was a group of students from Leeds University. And why? The plane hit a wall and landed 20 seconds short of the world record flight time. So, you can see the five W's in this introduction. The rest of the article would then be extra details about the story, which the reader may decide they want to read more of. Let's see what else is included in a newspaper article. Something else that's very common in a newspaper article are quotes. A quotation tells us what has been said and who said it. They can help to tell the story or tell us about the events by giving the reader the opinions of the people involved. You can use direct or indirect reported speech which we will learn about in our next lesson together later on in the week. 
An example of this, though, is, they're lucky to be alive, said Sam Fenton, 35, Chief Fire Officer for Greater Manchester Fire Service. You can see the extra information, again, the age is in brackets, so incorporating a bit of what we've looked at before. Another thing that you might have spotted on the front cover of First News is that there are large photographs. These are also accompanied with captions. Photos and captions help to tell the story by giving the readers a snapshot of what happened, where it happened or who it happened to. So you can see I've got a picture of Colonel Thomas Moore here walking one of his laps around his garden. Photos will also need a caption underneath them. A caption is just a short sentence that explains what's happening in the photograph. Depending on your newspaper report topic, you might also include a variety of facts or statistics. Now facts I would hope you would include because they are the things you're reporting, the true events that have occurred. The statistics are more numbers and data. To help you understand that a bit, I've got an example here which is both a fact and a statistic. Captain Thomas Moore, again, it could be Colonel Thomas Moore now, has raised over 29 million pounds for the NHS. You can see I've included the number, the amount of money he's raised for the NHS. That number's probably climbed even higher now. But at the time of writing, he'd raised just over 29 million pounds for the NHS. So you can see I've included a fact and a statistic that I could put into an article. Take a moment then just to remind yourself of the features. See if you can name them all. Say them out loud. Here we go. A headline, the five W's in the introduction. Quotes, photos in a caption, and facts and statistics. Now you should go out and try and find a newspaper article. Either look for one online, or if your mum or dad have an actual newspaper, Ask them to help you look for an article you could look at and see if you can spot all of these things. I bet you'll be able to. Join me in the next lesson. Where we're going to look at how to write direct or indirect speech for our quotes. This will really help give your article some real detail that will keep your reader wanting to read more. Join me next time. Hopefully now you'll be able to identify some of these features in some newspaper articles. Join me next time where we'll look at direct and indirect speech and how these can be included in an article. See you then.